Yo, what is up guys? Today we are going to be testing microphones and comparing them. So let's go. So as a beatboxer and looper since 2007, I've been trying a lot of different microphones, whether it be for solo beatbox or for looping, including the Shure SM58, the Beta 58, the AKG D5, the Audix Fireball, the Audix OM7, the E845 by Sennheiser, the DPA De facto, that's a microphone that costs a grand. Um, Prezonus microphone, so many microphones. And by the way, let me know in the comment section right now if you are a beatboxer or a looper, what microphone you are using. But today we will focus on three microphones. We have my everyday mic, the mic I use every day that follows me on stage that I've been using for two years. We have a low budget microphone, um, which I'm going to talk a bit in a second. And we have a high or mid high budget uh, microphone which we will see right now. So starting from low to high, we have the lowest budget microphone, which is a $20 microphone. It's the XM8500 Ultra Voice by Behringer. Let me focus this if I can. Um, this microphone, as I said, you can find around $20 online, is a cardioid microphone. Then we have the E945 by Sennheiser, which comes at about $200 and is a super cardioid microphone that picks up a wider range of frequencies than the XM8500. And finally, the last microphone we are going to see is the DPA 2028, which is also a super cardioid microphone that comes for about $600. And this microphone picks up an even wider range of frequencies than the E945. So I am not going to go in details through the specs because I'm totally not a tech geek or a specs guy. I just use my ears and see if something pleases me or not. So let's do the comparison. So what we are going to do to compare these three microphones is simply that I'm going to solo beatbox and freestyle with these three microphones. And then I'm going to loop using the Boss RC505 Mark II. I'm going to loop the exact same thing with each microphone. And to be totally fair and even, I'm not going to mix or master anything. I'll just keep it raw as it is coming out of the loop or coming out of my mouth. So let's start the solo beatbox comparison right now. Okay, so for solo beatbox, here's what I think. Okay, the, the XM8500 is not as clean as the other two microphones and you can clearly hear that. I mean, this is not bad. This is a good microphone to start with, but it just does not have the dynamics that the two other microphones have. Now this is leaving us with the E945 and the DPA 2028. The DPA has much more gain than the E945. It probably has more dynamics also, but what really stood out here is the gain. Um, it, it really was much louder than the E945. However, I did feel that the sound was cleaner on the E945 compared to the DPA. So I'll leave you guys make your own decision uh, as which microphone you would rather have for solo beatbox. I'm not a solo beatboxer, I'm a looper. So we are going to try out these three microphones on the loop station right now. All right, so for the loop station, I'll do something pretty simple. I'll just make a basic beat, some hi-hats, shakers. I'll do some vocals using reverb and delay. It's gonna be the same reverb and delay for uh, each one of these microphones. I'll use some guitar to bass effect to have some bass with some humming. And that is it. I won't use any EQ because 
using EQ might be good for one microphone and worse for another. So let's start right now with the XM8500. So for the loops, here's what I think. They all sound different, of course. We get what we heard from the solo beatbox comparison. We get it on the loop station. But the advantage of the loop station is that live on the spot, you can decide yourself of the EQ. So just by tweaking a little bit the EQ, you can have the XM8500 to sound immediately better. So just by changing some settings in the lows, the highs, the mids, uh, this is what you get with the 8500. So I won't comment too much on the results here. I think the DPA sounds great, honestly. And the, the E945 sounds fine. And with EQ, the XM8500 can sound maybe not as good as these, but actually, yeah, with, with the right EQ, it can sound as good as these microphones. So should you invest directly in a mid or high mid or high budget microphone? Well, the answer is it really depends on what you want to do with it. If it's for solo beatbox and you can afford these kind of microphones, then I would say yes, do it. You won't regret it. But if you cannot afford it, well, this is really the basic. This is $20. So uh, if $20 is the max you can put in it, this microphone is good. If you can go a bit higher with a AKG D5 or a SM58, that's even better. But here's what I think. I started looping with this microphone. 
because I did not have any budget at all. So this was the cheapest mic I found and I bought it immediately. I bought this microphone to loop. You can get a low budget microphone and simply apply some EQ to your sounds. And even if it's just for solo beatbox, we are in 2022, there are many softwares out there. I use Mixcraft Studio, but there are a lot of free alternatives to this, like Audacity, for example. So just by applying some EQ, you can turn this microphone into this. And I'm just talking about EQ. I'm sure you can learn more about plugins that may help you to make your tracks more dynamic, more punchy. And it's always a good thing to learn these things. Even if you are already using a $600 microphone, it will still help you to have some basics in mixing and EQ in your sounds. So I could totally tell you to go in the description of the video and click on the affiliate links to buy one of these two microphones and I would get 3% of whatever you purchase. But as you know, this is not what I do on this channel. I'm just being honest and letting you know that if you are willing to work a little bit on your sound, then you don't need one of those microphones. Of course, it helps. But if you are ready to spend some time EQing your sound, then it is not a necessity and you can go for a cheaper option like with this Behringer XM8500. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. Uh, I will do more videos like this where I compare gear, where I do some reviews. Uh, also a lot of videos coming with the Mark II as I'm still learning how to use this machine right here. And um, if you are interested in these kind of videos, consider subscribing to the channel because there's gonna be a few this year at least. So uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you very soon. Peace.